Now, if we are going to think um, constructively about um, ideas, proposals, projects, and so on, um, as academics, we also need some funding. So we've got <laughs> the right people here this afternoon who will be able to at least point us in the right direction. Um, so I w we've got two people from the ESRC today, Owen Dowsett and Eloise Dot. So I think it's Owen who will come and tell us a little bit about what are the opportunities um, through ESRC. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and thank you very much to Eve for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to come here. Never actually been to LSE before, so <laughs> all a new experience. Um, my name's Owen Dowsett, and I'm from the Research Directorate at the ESRC, the Economic and Social Research Council in Swindon, where we're based with four other of the research councils. Um, and then there's the Medical Research Council in London and the Arts and Humanities Council in Bristol. Um, and I must say, I've only been here for the last hour, but I found it absolutely fascinating, to be honest, and I'm ruining the um, missed opportunity, really, of not coming earlier this morning. So I do apologise for that, but I will be looking at the, at the video when it comes out. Um, and I think, really, I'll just uh, scoot over this bit, because I'm sure you're all aware of it in one form or another. But our mission is to promote and support high-quality, basic, uh, strategic and applied research, and relatedly to um, facilitate adequate postgraduate training in the social sciences. Um, it's also to advance knowledge more generally and provide train, trained social scientists who meet the needs of users and beneficiaries with the ultimate aim of contributing to the um, competitiveness of the UK, the effectiveness of public services and policy, and the overall quality of life in the UK as well. Um, and finally, as we've talked about uh, in the past hour a little bit, to try and facilitate, where possible, a, dissemina a dissemination of this knowledge um, and to maximise the effect of research that is done in the social sciences. Um, in the financial year 2008-2009, we had a budget of £203 million. And we've got quite a broad remit, um, and we work, as you'll see in a minute, we're working in many ways trying to bring this, um, the different disciplines that we cover, as close together as possible um, and to encourage cross-disciplinary research, but also, where possible, to allow this across research councils. And there's all sorts of mechanisms that are currently being developed to try and encourage better cross-council working, um, as you'll see, in areas such as energy and climate change, which particularly needs and lend itself to this kind of interdisciplinary working. Um, the current ESRC strategic plan that we're working under uh, was for the years 2005 to 2010. Um, we had seven strategic research challenges in that plan, um, and energy, the environment and climate change was one of those key challenges. And I actually work in that area um, and Eloise works in the area as well. So we're constantly receiving applications, um, funding applications uh, in the areas of energy, the environment and climate change. And we're also involved in some of the more directive funding that's coming down from the Research Council and its boards and the funding of centres and more large-scale research programmes in the area. Now, the new ESR strategic plan is currently being developed, and it's actually going to be published, um, don't hold me to this, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be published in May 2009, um, and that will go on to 2014. And it's going to continue to reflect ongoing commitments to uh, facilitating uh, work in this area, and in particular to try and encourage more of an interdisciplinary whole systems approach to energy and climate change and the environment more broadly. Um, and one particular dimension that is particularly going to be stressed in the new strategic plan is the need to maximise impact where possible, impact beyond, <coughs> excuse me, beyond um, academic colleagues and the academic community, and to ensure that research is followed through to uh, policy change wherever possible. Um, and as you can see, uh, we are still committed to working with key stakeholders uh, to ensure that we can try and uh, maximise this impact where possible. The Living with Environmental Change programme, as I'm sure you're all aware of, uh, I'm quite closely involved uh, with that. And that's ambitious. Obviously, it's a £1 billion 10-year programme that's kind of an umbrella programme for all sorts of uh, small-scale research projects. But I think it's necessary in this area to try and 
bring together these links and um, facilitate uh, discussion and collaboration where possible. And the final point, um, there's going to be seven challenges in the new strategic plan, as there was before, and there's all sorts of cross-cutting um, areas of research that, uh, that are linked between these different challenges, and we'll be um, bringing those together uh, where necessary and where possible. And as I think uh, Stephen already mentioned, I was also intrigued to read some of the things that Professor John Bennington said, and I actually saw him at the launch of the, research, uh, the Joint Climate Research Centre last week. Um, and as you can see, he has predicted this uh, quite alarming increase in demand on these three fronts by the year 2030, and he's called it the perfect storm. I think that sums it up quite nicely, and it also reflects very well the need for interdisciplinarity in this area, multidisciplinarity, and as the focus is here, a kind of complexity um, science approach to this. Um, I mean, the prospect of a perfect storm, it really does necessitate research that is not only high quality, but it's also interdisciplinary and it's coordinated on a large scale um, where we can get everyone that's interested and has a, an interest in this area to, to come together. And so through large-scale investments and cross-council working and strategic partnerships with all sorts of external bodies, both public and uh, private, uh, we are committed to facilitating the necessary interdisciplinary research in the areas of energy, the environment and climate change and to ensuring that social science is embedded as far as possible in research initiatives in this area. And as I'm sure many of you would agree, I do think it underpins much of the work that needs to be done in this area. For instance, with uh, the Living with Environmental Change programme, the ESLC is leading on Objective F and it's been kind of cross councilly agreed that Objective F is one of those objectives which is going to... Mm -hmm. Sorry, Objective F, yes, Objective F, yeah. I don't have the exact wording here, but it's all about bringing the communities together and to ensure, sorry, <laughs> to ensure that um, they're using their environments in a way that suits them, but in a way that is also sustainable, and ensuring that the uh, necessary um, information exchange. Um, mechanisms are in place that respond to the specificity of different cultural communities um, across the world. Is it academic communities? Um, no, I mean social communities. Social yeah. Um, so some ongoing examples of the interdisciplinary research that we are um, funding in this area include um, all of these things. Some of them are coming towards their end um, such as the Tyndall Centre for Climate Change Research. The Rural Economy and Land Use Programme is something that I'm very closely involved with. And this has been uh, quite a large-scale um, programme. It's worth £24 million plus. Um, and it's been, in some terms, quite revolutionary in bringing together the natural sciences and the social sciences and enabling all sorts of uh, new research to to get underway in these areas of the rural economy and land use. And that's very much going to feed into the new Living with Environmental Change programme in many ways and in terms of facilitating uh, interdisciplinary research. Um, we also have a new UK Transport Research Centre, which um, will undoubtedly provide some findings in this area. Um, I've spoken very briefly about Living with Environmental Change already. Um, in terms of new developments, these are all very preliminary, uh, but we are still committed to um, funding a research centre on sustainable debt behaviours. That's with DEFRA, um, a variety of other governmental departments and the devolved administrations. Um, we're in preliminary talks with other research councils about funding some work on energy and communities, carbon capture and sequestration, security and equity, low-carbon vehicles, plate marginal settings, um, and eco economics of ecosystem services. Um, that's coming from above in terms of the ESRC. And coming from ESRC. So did you say that the Energy and Communities uh, project or whatever was not coming under the ESRC remit? No, 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 it is. It is. No, the right. ESRC is uh, uh, the lead in that. I mean, th these are all very preliminary ideas, and they're in the beginnings of discussion between different research councils and partners but um, we've held a workshop on energy and communities and the next stage is to try and get some funding for it. 
Um, about the Research Center on Sustainable Behaviors, could you give me an update or give us an update on where that is? Yes. Um, it's currently in the process of being discussed between the different partners. Um, <laughs> I know that's very... It's supposed to be announced, you know, Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that, and I know that's slightly vague, but there's just been some uh, issues that have had to be resolved between the co-funding partners. Um, and that's where we're at at the moment. I mean, we're hoping to um, announce a decision in the next couple of months. Um, and obviously, we're a bit behind schedule on this. But uh, we're determined to ensure that the best outcome is made. And it seems Thank that this you. delay is necessary for that. <laughs> Um, what's a plate marginal yeah. setting? <laughs> <laughs> plate marginal <laughs> I think it's very much in terms of tectonics, and um, it's not my area of expertise, unfortunately. And I can see that it's not directly relevant to climate change and energy, per se, but it's in that kind of area of the environment. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many of these are actually going to come out into something tangible um, in research funding. Finally, in terms of our responsive mode funding, that is where applicants um, openly apply to us for funding rather than we define a topic for um, a centre or a programme to be commissioned competitively. Um, there are a number of changes that are going to be emphasised in the new strategic plan. I've kind of talked about them already. But one, we're going to try and encourage much more innovation and ambition in terms of how um, applicants use their methodologies, how they disseminate knowledge and the kind of topics that they are um, addressing. Uh, linked to that in some ways is to, as I say, encourage more interdisciplinary research um, bringing together kind of novel partnerships between different disciplines. <coughs> and finally, um, maximising, as I said before, maximising research impact as much as possible. Um, so, yeah, that is all I have to say. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Cheers. Um, I, th I think it would be useful if you could take a few questions. I can take um, some questions. I, I would like to start, if I may. Can you uh, go back to your just one earlier slide? Yeah. One before. How do I... Uh... The previous one. Previous? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, this. Yes. All three elements yeah. um, are, are going to fall down completely if you don't have the right referees. Yes. Innovation, <laughs> they're terrified of, yeah. particularly if it's very ambitious. Mm -hmm. Interdisciplinary research, if you get your referees in an area that it's not their expertise, they will usually knock it, yep. um, and so on. So I think you really do need to think very carefully how you guide referees and how that refereeing process happens. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to end up with the, you know, the usual, yeah, usual <laughs> kind of proposals. Yeah. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I can see I've touched the soft <laughs> point. <laughs> okay, any questions uh, um, for Owen? Can yeah. I just say, to, in response to that, we have changed our referee guidance oh, great. to um, integrate those things. And we also work cross um to... Speak with other research councils where there is interdisciplinary research and ask them to suggest referees. So we are trying, but um, if everyone could understand that sometimes it's really, really difficult. Oh, yes. People are too yes. Busy and, yeah. But we are trying to and integrate that. Great. Thank you. <laughs> any, 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 any other questions? Any points? Yes, well, can you? I've got, yes, the, the gentleman here, yes. Is there any change in procedure if you want to put in a bid to two counties? So rather than just putting in a disciplinary bid into one county, you put it to two? Is that the normal procedure? Yeah, the normal procedure is that you submit it to a council, the one that you would think it falls more in line with, um, and then there's a cross-council agreement whereby a case officer that receives a particular application um, decides uh, if an application includes a sufficient amount of uh, work that is in another 
within another research council's remit, and they then correspond with um, a contact within that other research council, and we arrange, if it's uh, agreed by both parties, we arrange for contributions from the other research council to be made in that application yeah. as well, so, in like terms of refereeing and yeah. funding. So. Yeah. I'd like to add a word of um, advice here because it's well worth getting into discussion with the relevant research councils well in advance before you put in your proposal. Uh, We did that with three councils were involved, and it was a matter of actually engaging each one. Uh, And then they talked between them and decided this is the one that you need to, to, to take it to. But then all three worked together to get the referees and so on. So I think you, you don't just do it without um, advising them because I think that's absolutely essential. Did you have a point? Did that work? Did it, work? it went through review then, but did it actually come out favorable? It went right through the review and finally it wasn't funded because it was just too innovative, too ambitious and and, and far too many disciplines in between because we were bringing together art, mathematics, complexity and psychology and no one could understand all of those uh, disciplines. It was laughable when we got the responses back. So you can see why I feel so strongly about it. (laughs) Right. Where is the... Oh, there it is, yeah. Did you well, want... I was just going to say, I mean, I think if interdisciplinary research is going to flourish, and I think this is an example of where it's desperately needed, um, it's going to... T- I mean, with respect, it's going to take more than just giving some guidelines to your um, yeah. referees. Mm-hmm. They're going to, at the very least, I think, need a training session where they're actually Absolutely. given given you know, a pile of these things and then at the end told, actually, you should have funded that one. That was exactly. like, perfectly sensible. I know you yeah. thought it was loony. And actually, I think it would just need an incredible amount of training mm. to get people to behave mm. differently because none of us are good at this. We all think... Mm. We all look at other people's stuff and say, oh, yeah, yeah. that's trivial. Yeah. You know, our stuff is, is so fantastic. So I think, I think you really, really, really <laughs> need agree. to think very, very carefully about you know, doing some fairly extreme things. Yeah. OK. Yes, I think the lady there, then back here... Sorry, maybe I missed something, but I just wasn't clear. What are the Climate Change Leadership Fellows? Did I miss details about what that is? Um, There were five, six uh, Climate Change Leadership Fellows that were funded in 2008, and they all began work in towards the end of 2008. Um, Dr. Harriet Bulkley and... Where are they based? uh, Dr. Harriet Bulkley is based at Durham. (coughs) Um, you're testing me now. Professor Nick Pigeon. Um, but there are different, are different Yeah, different universities. universities. Oh, it I was see, a competitive right. okay. thing, and it was uh, just... Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, um, and six were funded in the end. We had a set amount. Of, um, Which one uh, it's not definite at the moment. Um, I think there's an idea to see how these go. And, yeah. uh, I just wanted to point something out about... Um, um, the maximising impact, mm-hmm. um, which sounds really good, um, maximising impact beyond academia. Yep. And the suggestion is always that it's into official policy, that it's impact into official policy. But um, there are um, there are there is stuff that that official policy does not want to respond to, that governments and indeed other political parties do not want to respond to. Mm -hmm. So it's not... um, um, For instance, I look at international trade agreements and there's no no take-up there in official policy, but I can be useful, for instance, talking to trade unions. I just want to point out that it's not just that trajectory into, um, and I, I wondered policy. if you had any comment about that, into official policy, no. especially where it is resistant to it. And I could see that that could be uh, possibly the case with some climate change stuff. Yes, certainly. No, I mean, uh, it's certainly not limited to policy and it's not limited to academia. We also, I think there's four different points that have been uh, stressed in terms of impact. Um, academia, policy, Economic and just the general public at large, maybe through the media or whatever. I mean, there's all sorts of mechanisms that we want to ensure that impact's maximised, and it's certainly not limited to the policy environment. Uh, to provide some justification for Eve's very good point about innovation, 
Uh, the, you may have missed it earlier. Somebody said that people sometimes say, well, I wouldn't start from here. And that might be a sort of trite thing. But what they're really meaning is, if you start from here, all you can do is evolve into these spaces. Mm. You need to transform to get where exactly. you want to. And that may mean um, the way that you evaluate value mm. Mm. against mm. current mm. terms and mm. current methods yep. doesn't show you the potential yes. value mm. without realising that transformation can take you to a different space. Yeah. Um, and that's quite a difficult issue because it means may be challenging some of the current orthodoxies and that may mean challenging some of the worthy people who say, no, of course it has to be like this. So there's, there's quite a difficult issue there. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Owen, thank you very much indeed. Uh, will we be able to download um, this and uh, circulate it uh, to everyone? Because yep. I think there'll be, obviously there, you gave us a lot of information that we couldn't just take down, so it will be great. <laughs> yeah, no, certainly. Um, so summarising, uh, uh, there are both calls open at the moment plus responsive mode. Yeah, there's responsive mode. Um, our annual competitions generally um, start towards the end of the year, so a lot of them are in the final stages of uh, final decisions being made, so it's too late, late really to get involved in the majority of them. But they will all start again towards October time um, each year, and that includes all sorts of different uh, applications that can be made. OK, Peter, you had a point. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, some years ago there was the word complexity appeared yes. on... <laughs> some of these new developments that were going to be funded. Uh, but it seems to have disappeared. And, uh, and, um, e and even in EPSRC, I mean, it's also, you know, you know it's a bit past. So I just... So, so first of all, um, perhaps I should advertise here the next seminar that we're going to have in June, which is about how research itself... Uh, can uh, can benefit or can use the framework of complex systems and complexity thinking because in reality what you have there I mean we're nearly everything you have there <laughs> apart from plate marginal settings which I'm not sure uh, is really about has is about complex systems of of various denominations and kinds and therefore complexity is highly relevant but so there is a, a process of recognition of interdisciplinarity, the need for it, of innovation and so on. And so in a way, complex systems thinking, the recognition of complexity is affecting you, although you're not actually doing any research. I would suggest <laughs> that you might also think about funding research into how, how research can be done because this is a key issue. We, we all know interdisciplinarity tends to mean there are more hurdles to jump because each separate sec discipline erects its own barriers, so to speak. And innovation, as we've said, I think, you know, is tricky. But so uh, I think that, that there is there's something we can learn. The progression of this is that we went from potentially funding pure complexity, let's call it, uh, to sort of issues, issue-driven uh, uh, problems, which are all actually complex systems and will, if they're going to be treated sensibly, will actually involve some kind of process of, of analysis and synthesis and kind of co collective behaviour trade-off, that type of thing. So, uh, so I think that it's, first of all, it is an interesting area of research for ESRC in particular, um, and uh, as I say, well, and so it would also put back the word complexity back into your yes. documentation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 So, Owen, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and also, of course, thank yes. you, SRC, for, because it, yes, this, this whole series of seminars <laughs> is... <laughs>